Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Carolyn. It's wonderful to have you all here. I share blessings and just celebrations of joy and the community that you are from Mary Lou. I returned home after many delays and things like that. Um, regardless of that, the visit was wonderful with Mary Lou and her family. And she just is so grateful for all of the cards, the prayers, the support. And she said, I feel through the spirit that I'm right here with all of you. So I share that. And I'm just very grateful that I was able to be with her and her family and, some, and her sister who could be a comedian. She is not lacking in laughter, Mary Lou, I will tell you that. But it was, it was a wonderful blessing. Today in our worship, we're focusing on our uh, conversations on being well. And we are in our last, our fifth week. Each week we had a different currency that we've been talking about. Truth, relationship, um, leadership, all of these things, time and place, in the framework of being well. And today is our last topic. Last but not least, it is money. And this is where people go, oh, great. You know, <laughs> the offering plates are coming back. No, it's, it's the currency of, well, of wellness and money merging together to create wholeness and wellness within our lives and our communities. That's the framework in which we'll hear scripture and our service is kind of built around that today. So if you would like to be part of a small group uh, to talk about some of the questions afterwards, there's two groups that meet on Sunday and throughout the rest of the week. Anybody is welcome at any time. I invite you to stand as you're able. We sing, let us go now to the banquet. You'll find that in the red hymnal 523 we sing together this is the gospel that we sing it needed a shaker at least <laughs> we continue with the thanksgiving at the font if tadashi wants to come forward he can i bet he's in the back if not that's okay oh no he's not in the back i see mom there we go i thought you were hiding i need help pouring the water Hey, Tadashi, you want to step up? There you go, my friend. All right, you tip it. I'm holding it. This is our baptismal promise, storied waters of God's loving grace. Thank you so much. Are you going to splash? Ooh, we need longer arms. Yes. You, it's wet, isn't it? Can you splash again? All right, there you go. Remember, Tadashi, that God loves you. All right, want to go back to Mama and Dad? Listen, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the people. God's word does not return empty, but accomplish it, accomplishes that which God intends. Humanity, recirculating God's abundant gifts and resources so that every person and all creation is enlivened through the outpouring of love manifest in Jesus Christ. Come to the waters of baptism. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Lord God, you are abundant life. Transform our hearts and lives. Create in us a spirit of generosity until our lives reflect your grace outwardly in an ever-flowing cycle of blessings that enrich the lives of those around us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated.
The reading today is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning with the third verse. What we're about to hear is a portion of Paul's letter to Timothy, who was a young church leader. And Paul writes to encourage Timothy in gracious leadership at the church in Ephesus. If anyone teaches anything different and doesn't agree with sound teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ and teaching that is consistent with godliness, that person is conceited. They don't understand anything but have a sick obsession with debts and arguments. This creates jealousy, conflict, verbal abuse, and evil suspicions. There is constant bickering between people whose minds are ruined and who have been robbed of the truth. They think that godliness is a way to make money. Actually, godliness is a great source of profit when it is combined with being happy with what you already have. We didn't bring anything into the world, and so we can't take anything out of it. We'll be happy with food and clothing. But people who are trying to get rich fall into temptation. They are trapped by many stupid and harmful passions that plunge people into ruin and destruction. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some have wandered away from the faith and have impaled themselves with a lot of pain because they have made money their goal. Here ends the reading. Thank Thanks you. to God. The Holy Gospel is from the 10th chapter of Mark, beginning at the 17th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. As he was setting out Jesus on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I've kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around, and he said to all of his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded, and they said to one another, Lord, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Well, Peter began to say to Jesus, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, and mothers and children, and fields, and persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Move this. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. Well, if you haven't, you know, gotten the message, 
money, right? Wealth, the love of money. Money is not the root of all evil, but the what? The love. And here in this gospel encounter between Jesus and this man who kneels at Jesus' feet, we come across this obvious theme. The love of money creates all sorts of issues. What must I do to inherit eternal life? The man asked Jesus. He didn't ask what to do with his life, if he was on the right path, but what must I do, Jesus, to inherit eternal life? This is something that he thought he was on the right path. He had kept all the commandments, all 10 of them and probably a lot more, since his youth. So what more did he need to do? What box needed to be checked off? And I often hear conversations, all sorts of people asking, do you really think we'll be in heaven one day with God? Have I done enough? Similar question to what this man is asking. And certainly he was an upright citizen, has kept all the commandments. Would you agree that he was a good person? Sounds that way. And Jesus says to him, you lack one thing, just one thing that is. And what is that one thing? You gotta go sell all of your possessions and distribute your money, and then you will have riches in heaven. And the man goes away deeply grieving, deeply grieving. And it's interesting too that Jesus, before he says this, looks at the man and loves him and says this, not as a scolding, but from love. And the man goes away grieving, for he had many possessions. What we learn so often is that money is such a thing that we grasp and hold on to so tightly. We're really conditioned since we're young. I, from my first birthday cards that I would get with a dollar or five dollars, that was a lot of money back in the 70s, right? My mom, I would, oh, I had such plans. Oh, I had the plans. I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna get these little animals and I could still think, or the Star Wars action figure. That was big. But my mom would say, no, you're gonna save your money because one day you're gonna need a, you know, whatever, or a college. And I thought, what? You have to save, you have to save, you have to save. And my mom wasn't steering me wrong, and I'm sure you've taught the same to people. You have to save, and, but well, you can only spend 10%, and then there's church, and you think, oh my gosh, mom, it's a dollar, <laughs> right? But there's something that gets ingrained in us that perhaps we will not have enough one day. And parting with whatever we have, whether you have a dollar in your savings account or a hundred thousand, or whatever it is. Sometimes Jesus is saying, look into your heart and see how tightly we are grasping those purse strings. And it isn't even about giving to the church what Jesus is saying, but to whom? The poor, the underserved, those who are systematically oppressed in Jesus' day and like it's not happening today. Give your money, let it go and he walks away in grief. Our question, dear Jesus, is what are we to do when we also have to live into the future and we don't know how far that will go and yet we have to be secure. And Jesus is saying, trust, trust the Lord. God provides. Tadashi and Melissa and Mitch in our Sunday school time this morning, we're talking about that. There's a picture as we were singing, come to the banquet, I have this, in my office, a picture from an artist in El Salvador that has this wonderful picture of Jesus with his arms, remember Tadashi? Wide open, welcoming all to the table. There is plenty, there is an abundance. Whether you are in El Salvador, there is an abundance in God's mercy and grace. We can let go, we can let go and give so that the systematically oppressed, so that those who are poor may also at the same table 
thrive, and be provided for. It is God's mercy. It is a system of blessings that recirculate and flow from person to person. It is the spirit of generosity that is contagious. As I sat this past week with Mary Lou next to her bedside as she was moved from the hospital to home hospice, and she and two of her good friends, Genevieve and Barb, and her sister, who could be a comedian, Judy, just shared stories with, um, their with Mary Lou's daughter and son, Gretchen and Aaron, about how generosity just infects and is contagious with our time, with how we use our place, this building or wherever we are, with how generosity and letting go and trusting God affects our relationships and grows them and grows gracious leaders. Not to say that I'm going to lead this and it's my way, but to empower others and invite into a spirit of generosity and equality to also say that we have enough, we have enough, and God is calling us to share. To share so that recycling of blessings flow inwardly and, outly, and outwardly. The man we don't know in this gospel story. We don't know what happened to him. So many of Jesus' stories, there's an encounter, there's a problem, and we're just kind of left to fill in the blanks. But I return to that original question that he asked, what must I do, Jesus? Notice the doing and who's doing the doing. What must I do to inherit eternal life? It's a funny question. You can't do anything to inherit anything. That's up to somebody else, right? You can ask, oh, mom, woohoo, I know that bank account right? But you, you have no power over that. I've been with many families after a loved one dies, and someone's always, you know, what do you mean they gave $50,000 to church? That's our money. I've heard that many times. Not here, necessarily, but I've heard it. And I'm sure there's stories in your life where you hear that sentiment, that clutching of the purse string, or whatever it might be that's being clutched onto grandma's wedding ring or whatever. But there's always something else in this question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? To inherit something, somebody must die. Never easy. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus dies so that we will come to the table and be invited and inherit this great love and grace that flows from God's table wherever we are, whether it's our home table, the altar, this little children's table, the arms are open, the invitation is wide, and mercy and grace abound. Jesus has died that we might thrive and have life and be generous towards all so that blessings flow outwardly and recirculate in such a spirit of blessing and joy for all people. Amen. With the whole church throughout this planet, we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to, con to profess our faith in the Holy Triune God. Should you need those words? They are printed in the inside of the red hymnal, the back cover. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue in prayer. Called by Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Provider Lord, give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Show us the freedom of being generous with your gifts and your resources. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Provider Lord, from the light of dawn to the dark of night, your creation re reveals your majesty. Bring healing to the lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Provider Lord, provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Provider Lord, loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels, put an end to hunger, and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in your homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Provider Lord, inspire us to recycle your gifts that they might flow as regenerative blessings of wellness in this time and place. Unite us through respectful relationships. Lead us into gracious leadership. Teach us to listen for truth. And create us to be generous with money and assets of every kind. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Provider Lord, the cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in your remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. For what else do we pray this morning? Provider Lord, we pray for Kathy Holt's brother Ken, who was hospitalized with two. Uh, blood clots in his lungs. For a man who has been so healthy and is shaken now, we pray for his strength, his comfort, and for the family that love and care for him. Guide their medical team. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The spirit of peace is with you all. Let's share that peace with a sign with our neighbors around us. You may be seated. I have just a, a two, I think two quick little announcements. This coming Saturday from 9 till 11, we're looking for some volunteers that can help make some sandwiches to feed food insecure people within Milwaukee County. That happens over at JOM. Just One More Ministry. Pam, hey Pam, she's in the back. She's kind of organizing this, and we're looking for, I think Bella will be there. I think we need at least two or three other people. If you're able to help, the more hands, the merrier. Are you recruiting? <laughs> ah, yes. And we're gonna do that once a month. So if you're able, we have three dates in your announcements that are available for that. It's a great way to live out and act out the generosity of our faith by feeding those, especially those who are hungry. How many sandwiches do you make? About 100? About 100. Yeah. Thank you. Then the following Saturday, the 18th, in conclusion to the conversations on being well, although we're really never done. You never want to really stop talking about wellness, right? Like that just came out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, that sounds odd. Now we could be unwell. 
That's why Jesus died and was risen, so that we may live into wellness and act into that wellness. But to see all of these currencies, money, time and place, wellness, relationship, truth, gracious leadership, to see all of these kind of at play, they're all currencies, they're all exchanges that happen, oftentimes when we're not aware, to see them all at work, it's helpful to see that happening somewhere. And that place on February 18th is just one more ministry, the same place where the sandwiches will be made, the same place where so many people here volunteer. And it's just about a mile and a half or two due west of us. There's directions to get there. The time has been adjusted to 9 a.m. to 10.30 to work with the Just One More Ministry volunteers that are there doing many other things. So to put all of the conversations and small group conversations we've been having on wellness together, we would love, I would love to see everyone, whether you are in a small group or not, sign up or just show up over there on the 18th at 9 a.m. If you need a carpool or something, let me know. But does anyone else from Stewardship 365 need or want to say anything about that ministry site visit? Yeah, Alita. I'm not, I think she's gone that weekend, right? Yeah, she, Julie is the Kaleidoscope uh, Institute director who was with us several weeks ago, and she trusts us. They're actually kind of modeling what we've been doing and are going to be sharing this with many other congregations to talk about wellness and these various different currencies that flow and interact with each other and how they really empower all of us to serve. So again, rather than going on and on, I encourage you to sign up for that ministry site tour. Some people learn by talking and sitting and listening. I'm one of those people that like, I like to walk around and actually see it in action. So that'll happen on the 18th of February. Yeah, Luann. Dress warm. Oh yes, dress warm. warm part of building yes. Because it's a food rescue program, so obviously you don't want your food to freeze. But I thought that we were going to be in a place that was a little bit warmer. So do you know that about that, Walt? Not much warmer? Okay, great, great. So if you have questions, you can see me, you can see Walt, Danette, Evelyn, anybody from Stewardship 365, just kind of ask people if they signed up. Were there any other announcements for today? All right, I invite you to stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and direct you in practicing generosity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.